Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to attempt to engrave on a few kitchen utensils. You gotta watch this. I'm working on a couple of designs here on Design Space on Cricut. And I'm going to decide which ones I wanna use. These are all pieces from the Dollar Tree. So, hey, they're great for practice. I didn't wanna buy anything expensive until I kinda of knew what I was doing. Uh, I will show you how we are going to set this to engrave and then we will get this on the mat and all taped down. And then we'll see what comes out. All right, I've got my design figured out. Let's go over to the Cricut and I'll show it to you. So I've decided on this design here and what I've done is chosen it and go up to your operation. And originally it's gonna be a cut image. So this is what it'll look like, but we wanna engrave. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna hit engrave. And now it kind of changes the look of it. I've made sure that I've attached all my pieces so we are on attach. And then trying to figure out the size, I measured from here to here and here to here. And because this is tapered, I think I'm just gonna put my design right in here. So I made sure that I had set up something like this. I did a triangle to start with and that just wasn't doing it for me. So I'm going to get this taped down I'm using the edge of this on a line. And we are going to tape this down and we are going to tape it very well. And your best to use a strong grip mat. I don't have one. So hopefully this will be strong enough to hold it. Feels like it might be all right. A little bit more won't hurt. All right, I'm gonna go real quick and measure. Grab a measuring tape. The next thing we're gonna do is tell the Cricut to make it on a mat. And we're going to, let me show you what I did here. We're going to now make it. We wanna put this on a mat. Now it's coming up in the top corner, but what I wanna do is put it down here. So we're going to come in between the eight and 10 inch which is all the way down here. And we are at six inches, which is center. So I'm gonna line this up centered. All right, what does that look like? Next, we're going to get our maker connected. I'm gonna choose stainless steel and it is going to tell me that I need number 41. And it is this tip. See, it's got a very pointy end on it. So I'm going to take out the fine tip. Let's get you over here so you can see. Bad angle. I'm going to remove that, throw it in here, 
and I have a quick disconnect here. All right. All right. Let's see what happens. So I've realigned this what again. I did was I let the mat go in and out first, and then I attached this. What I get, need to make sure is that it doesn't have to go any farther than this, or it's not going to be able to finish the design. Yep. My, de my design needed to be closer to the front of the spatula. actually worked out fine because the thing it didn't do was the bottom so let's peel this off and we'll look at it it does look like it is slightly off center that's okay for a first try I'm trying to get the glare off of it there you can see that so not so bad pretty pleased I just have to figure out how to get this um, situated on the mat to where I don't have any interference. My design had a bottom scroll on it, like the top one. There you go. So when it went to come down to cut the bottom or engrave on the bottom, this was in the way. So it literally stopped the machine and said that there was interference. So it wasn't gonna let me do it. I need to figure out what I would do to make that work. Not bad for a first try. So I think what we'll do is we're gonna do something here. We, we're practicing, so we may as well do it. The little pie, and we're going to put the little pie right in here. I'm gonna have it do it one more time. You can always go across your cuts again, um, as long as you do not take your piece out of the Cricut. When it's ready for being ejected and removed with your arrows, don't do it. Just hit the play button or the go button again and it will recut or re-engrave and it will go directly over exactly what you just had done. I'm gonna show you here real quick. See how it's telling me to take it out? I really wanna cut again. now. It is telling you here to remove it, just ignore that. And what I'm doing is just pressing the cut, pressing the cut button again. All right, now I'm gonna remove it here. And that looks like it's very centered. That turned out good. Dessert first and it's got a little pie on it. This one, I think we'll put flip it good on it. So I'm going to get some wording on here and then we will cut this one or then we'll engrave this. I've got my design centered. I've already brought the mat in and out. Um, so it's already measured it and we're going to do the flip it good right here in the middle. And I'm hoping I have this lined up nice and straight. Okay, looks good, but I'm gonna do it one more time. All right. That one turned out great. <laughs> Hang on. trick is to get the mat and the piece lined up and taped down so that it doesn't move around or come off. 
Now, being the first time that I did this on tools, I had to also learn that you got to make sure that this isn't getting in the way. Okay. So the same is going to be for this one. And that's the problem that I didn't have with the jewelry that I did because, of course, it's all flat. So I'm going to see if I can show you this. I'm really pleased. I think they turned out really nice. This one, especially because it is nice and square, easier to do. And it did end up in the center just where it needed to be. And I like that the, um, the wording was able to be larger. This one, I think, turned out really nice too. It is center here and it's just slightly off on here, but very pleased with how well it engraved. And um, I think these would be great to make as gifts for people. So stay tuned. We're going to have other videos up soon. Zip tie it, pull your loop up.